like to welcome you guys to uh, Common Man 30 Braves in 30 Days. And we're going to start this off with two Braves, Tim McNair Jr., C.J. Bolar. Older, older, older. I know, but the announcers always say C.J. Bolar. And I'm like, where did they get that from? Uh, so real quick, man, while we're getting into it, uh, Tim, tell them where you're from, and then when you finish, C.J., tell the people where you're from. Uh, currently in Mississippi, um, but the ones that don't know it, like 40 minutes from Hattiesburg. I'm originally from Lumberton, Mississippi. Uh, spent all my school years in Purvis, so Purvis, Mississippi. And they say where you graduate from is where you're from, so we just gonna say per. I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll stay with the L. We'll stay with the L. So, uh, Tim, in your time here, uh, coming from Prince, straight out of high school, uh, your first year here, uh, just kind of talking about from the first day you stepped on the campus to now being a graduate, two times, right? Two-time graduate, right, mm -hmm. of all one state. Two-time. So we're not going to downplay that part. But undergrads and what? Um, my um, experience here, it was like, when I first got here, it was like home. kind of felt like home being around here. Um, like, as far as the football deal, it was a lot more challenging because, you know, you got to deal with a lot more technique. You got a lot more technicality with words and stuff like that. But, it was a smooth, it ended up being smooth once I kind of focused in and bought into the culture and stuff like that. And everything was smooth to be honest with you. So your, your undergrad degree is in? Yeah, agricultural science. And your uh, master's is? My master's I'm working on agronomy, on um, planting soil science. Planting soil science. Right? I'm trying to have so that way it be, they relate, so that way one don't fall straight from each other. That's what's up. Uh, see, so, uh, your path a little different. Your path a little different. Uh, just talk a little bit about how a kid from Purvis, uh, Mississippi. I think at the time you were there, y'all were two A or three A. Uh, Purvis four A. Four A. Just speak a little bit about how you got from Purvis High School to Vanderbilt. Okay. Well, uh, that spring, going into my senior year, it was. Recruiter had picked up the A for me. Uh, everything was going fast. Communicating with a lot of coaches. Uh, and then by the time season started, I really just shut that out of my head and just prepared for my last year. And when I looked up, at the end of the year it came, and I reached out to a coach from Vanderbilt, asked him if he, if he still wanted, wanted me to come to the school. I, I, I tried, you know what I'm saying, to get up there. And he, he, just, he told me to slow it down. Uh, he gonna come get me up for a visit, so I went and visited. Uh, enjoyed every part about my visit. Fell in love with the city at the time, and I committed in December 8th. Enrolled early. And right. So you didn't even go back to Burns the second semester, January. No. So, and for the people that don't know, where is Vanderbilt located? Vanderbilt's in Nashville, Tennessee. How many times would Purvis fit inside the city limits in Nashville, Tennessee? Honestly, I couldn't even tell. How many you. times would the L fit inside the city limits of Nashville, Tennessee? I feel like Lumberton might be able to fit inside of the school itself. <laughs> so I'm asking that because that's where you grew up, that's where you're from. Uh, both of you, basically. The Hattiesburg area would be the biggest surrounding area. Um, so how did you? How did you transition from there to being in Nashville and then basically you transitioning from, I don't want to say Prentice is smaller than where we are right now, but it's probably more going on on campus yeah. during the year than it is Prentice during, during the year. Yeah. So the transition for you had to have been something on the opposite end for Tim going to a big city. Yeah, it was, it was very significant. It was, it was really a, a, it wasn't a culture shock because I was still in a predominantly white city. So it was something that I was already used to, but it was definitely a, a big change in my life because like you said, it went from small town, small city, everybody knows everybody to a place where you can see new people every day. 
walk past them, don't even know who they are. So, I mean, it was a big adjustment, but I feel like I, I, I did a good job. Because you didn't come back to prom, right? No, I didn't. So you didn't go to see the prom? I didn't. I didn't. I had a chance to go to prom my ninth grade year, and my mom said no, so I just like, I just... So you never been to a prom? Never been to a prom. Tell me what the prom I also went to two prom. Um, junior year, I went to my high school uh, with my best friend at the time, and senior year, I went to her high school, and it turned out she was my girlfriend at that time. <laughs> I didn't even ask you to explain that part. <laughs> I was saying. I was just saying, you went to two proms, CJ didn't go to a prom. Uh, okay, we're going to leave that at that. Uh, but uh, Tim, you know, Tim McNair Jr., all right? McNair himself. Tim McNair Jr. So your uncle, God rest his soul, was throwing to your dad. Right. So there has to be some type of, or was there some type of pressure for you first to come here and then secondly to, to maneuver around in football knowing that your name, your last name is synonymous with this program around the country? I mean, it was somewhat pressure. Like when I first got here, it was kind of pressure like to kind of, you know, Made myself known, kind of made, made, made myself not look like a pushover, basically. So, like, when I first came in, it was kind of more like feel everybody out, you know, try to see how it goes. But, like, when I first got here, everybody kind of, you know, welcomed me in. Like, one of them, they didn't even care about who my uncle was, who my dad was. They just kind of brought me in. So, they, that helped ease out the pressure. And then, also having, like, I had numerous talks with my dad. Before I signed. I know how your dad is. Yeah. So I can imagine some of talks. Man, right, like, but like, what was crazy was like, he wasn't pushing me to the all all corner and then he was just kind of keeping me a level head. But like, once I did commit, he told me, when I, after I signed, he was like, just because of what me, what me and Steve done don't mean that you got to, you know, follow in the what we did. He said, make your own footprints at all corner. So that kind of helped me out knowing I didn't have to live up to his expectations too what I feel comfortable with. So, how, because I've seen it on the marks, so when, when your uncle, the head coach, starts being a coach and getting into you, at what point do you want to be like, come on, uncle? Uh, Have, has that almost came out? Sometimes it do. I'm gonna tell, tell Granny. <laughs> yeah, that 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 for real. Like they when we be having like meetings and stuff, and I, and you know sometimes you you be feel like coming, and we be having them late meetings. I be like, man, I'm gonna tell my mom. But then I, but like I don't deal with my dad as my high school coach. So like dealing with a family member as a coach, it kind of it ain't old, but it's something I'm familiar with. But I will say he is definitely different from my daddy for sure. Yeah, him and my dad are two different like polar opposites as head coaches, but both of them, both of them are effective and successful. And, and not to get completely off subject, I'm coming back to see you today. But as I was trying to explain to uh, today about Coach Mack, Coach Mack is as laid back and as mellow as they come, but then it's just like boom. But it's only game day, you know. Um, it's only inside the lines that he would just. Uh, and he's like, oh, right. I didn't know you had that coat, my dad. Tyrone. That's something I told my dad when he, cause after my first second year, he asked me, how is it playing for Coach Mack? And I was like, he the total opposite of you. Like, cause my dad, he got like a short fuse. Like, if he, yeah, like, you can bobble the pad. Like, for me, when I bobble the pad, he would chew me out just cause he had more expectation. So when I bobble the pad, he would chew me out. But Coach Mack is more like. He, even, he ain't gonna get on you. He gonna let like he gonna let the coaches coach you up. But if he get to the point you just get assistance with it, then he just gonna not when he snap how they how the old saying that he give you old and new. So he give you for everything. <laughs> so staying on the line of pressure, CJ dropping down from the SEC to to coming here uh, to a prominent SES program. Um, the expectations were high. Uh, you know, once you said this is where you're coming, you know, it, it became a, a news buzz, you know, uh, Bowler coming to all form, Bowler, 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 SEC, SEC. 
did you hear any of that? And was that any weight on you going into your first year here? Uh, I mean, it was there, and it was something to think about. But I try to keep my mind away from it and just play the way I knew I could play. And I, I feel like I found success at both levels. Um, so I'll just keep working and I'm doing the same thing that I've been doing. And really need to tune out that it's easy and going down the swing because it's a lot. It's players everywhere. I've always been told that, and when I transferred here, and I seen the, the guys who are on the team. Competition's everywhere. So. And you know, everybody else that you go against has been told where you come from. Yeah. So they trying to get their rep up off of you. See? So I mean, that has to be a driving factor in what what drives you. I mean, yeah. But but where I, where I came from first, where I ultimately came from, from Lumberton, the Fervis area, is either eat or be eaten. And I had to have that same attitude when I came down. So if you feel like you're going to eat off me, it's not going to happen. Because if, if it does happen, my pops going to be in my ear and I, I, can't, I can't let that happen. <laughs> so that leads me right into my next thing. Um, Tim, knowing that you're a football fan, CJ, your mom was a uh, Division One basketball player, right? If I'm not mistaken. Right, she played in the USA. Okay, so your mom played Division One basketball. Uh, you six three right now. So at what point did you drop the basketball and decide to play football? Um, I mean, I played both. I played basketball my whole life, football my whole life. Did you play or were you just on? There's a difference. No, I was, I was, I Tim was, was like just on the court. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like, on the court. That was a word on the street, you know, that yeah. handed, you know. But that, back to you. We, we talked about that later. <laughs> no, I, was, I, feel like, I feel like I was a guy on the basketball court. I probably could have had a chance to play at the next level. But like, like you said earlier, my, um, at, the, at the, my first semester in high school that I finished up, I, mean, I wanted to go to school early, get a head start. I put the basketball down then. Was your mom upset? I mean, you know, a little bit, you know, because, you know, basketball is sports where she, she supported me always. Is she tough on you sports-wise? Because I know, I've been around his family, right? and I know sports-wise, as Tim Dad would say, uh, we ain't just out there for nothing. Right. You know, we out there to compete. Yeah, that's more of my that's more of my dad's side. He gon' he gonna get everything he can out of you because he know what you capable of, what what I'm capable of, what my little sister, my little brother capable of. So he gonna get that all out of you. My mom, she more of the academic kind of that. So if you don't you ain't got your books right, then it ain't even no need to think about any type of sport. So she laid that foundation for me early. My pops though, he gonna. Can you hear, do, you, do you ever hear your mom during the game? During the game? Is she that? Uh, is that when she turns it on? I can I can hear it a little bit, but in the back of my head, I'm thinking about it when my pops is saying, if I go across the middle and I drop the ball because I feel somebody right there, that's, that's, that'd be the thing in the back of my head. If I'm running, I get hard down. Uh, so I know you can do that. Yeah, Does your mom ever get, because your mom just seems so cool. My mom, she like, my mom, she more, she hit me on academics, like. My mom's a teacher. Yeah, she's, uh, actually she moved up to counseling. So, okay. But like, she hit me on academics, like CJ mom, like, if it was academic, it wasn't nothing. Like, I can remember she got mad on me because I had a C on my progress report in elementary. So like, yeah, big progress report, I had a C. Yeah, she mad, like, <laughs> she ready to take everything mad. So like, she hit me on academics. But like, actually she, she more likes to see that mom than, than you think. Like, she would have been supportive with me in basketball simply because, you know, football is uh, physical and, you know, I'm her baby, she don't want me getting roped up. Man, he had kind of taught me, talked to me and kind of swayed me to lean more toward football. And it was bit, the best decision I made. I don't I had a great decision. Because you actually had an offer to go to Monroe or the year uh, you uh, yeah. they wanted me a, they wanted me a defensive back. Oh, we know her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to, I can't do that. I ain't trying to do no tackling. I can't do no tackling. So, uh, question to both of you, and we can start to wrap it up. Uh, for anyone that's that's.
thinking about coming coming here. Right? Coming here. Um, give me one thing that you would say to them as a as a draw. Like man, if I'm you, I'm going I'm coming to Alcorn because XYZ. Um I'll say is I will come to Alcorn because once you're here, you're not just dropped off. You're not you're not put in the bank and forgotten about. Like everybody's gonna treat you like family. And if that's something that you're really looking for, something that you want out of a school, that family feel, this this is what it is. Sure. Uh, I'll say uh, I'll go to I'll come to Alcorn and do what I tell people when they ask me like I'll come to Alcorn simply because of like they ain't gonna give up on you like. You might can mess up 30 times, but the coach is still going to like try to push you and bring you into the right direction. Because if I was coaching y'all, y'all know I, I don't mind calling moms and dads. Yeah, so like, they ain't gonna, y'all ain't going to give up on us. So like, that's what I'll tell anybody. Like, you, gonna, you ain't going to have a coach just looking at dollar signs when he see you. Right. He's looking at a human. Like, he's going to actually care for you and want you to be the best you can be. So that way you can go further in life. So that way you can come back and tell him. And um, like Coach Phil say, come back. And talk to him and co and talk to him and Joel about what's going on in life. So one last little deal. Uh, one something from your highlight reel that you remember that you like, man. I, I remember that forever. Like college, high school, college. Oh, you know, for sure, my touchdown. The um, one we played in PV game one. Uh, I was simply, simply because. It was it was crazy because right before the game even kicked off, like before we even came out, we hit all like was in the huddle and we was talking and like I think this was either my first or second game starting at the time. No, it was my second game because we played my niece before then, but uh, it was my first game starting, second game starting, and then we were sitting in the huddle, we were talking, and they were like, "Too man, uh, you scored a touchdown, bro. You might well go and hit your dad's celebration." Which is. Uh, you know, throw it, up, throw it up and knock out the port. And he always told me, I asked him one day, I was like, Dad, what that mean? Like, well, like, why you do that? He said, because whenever you score a touchdown, you just knock everybody out the port. So they were like, you got to hit that when you first did. You got to hit that on your first touchdown. And then, like, the, as the game went by, and I was making plays, helping the team out, and then it just so happened, Coach called uh, Kyle Rudd. And then when the ball came my way and I caught it and I got up, that was the only thing I could think about was just hitting that celebration. But I will say the reason, another reason I won't forget is because the camera moved off, but right after I did the celebration, I caught a cramp in both of my legs. <laughs> and it went straight to the ground. And I fully remember Coach Mack running down there and, and saying something to you that wasn't nice about, about what you did. But yeah. we, won't talk, we won't talk about that on the camera. Yeah. Yeah, he got on for celebrating. But hey, I will say he always tell him, act like you've been there before. I can't say I ain't. But, I, but from here on up, he ain't got to worry about me doing it. I mean, my high school coach used to tell me that, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it because... I'm, I'm, <laughs> and then again, CJ might not have seen me when I did get there, so right. you got to see what I do. Right. So what is from you, CJ? Um, let's see, probably, I don't know, I guess going out against South Alabama, and everybody expecting us to lose. But we expected us to win, and we came out and put up a fight. We, we lost at the end, but I feel like that game just woke up something in me about all going football and how, how relentless and, and, and how much we persevered through anything. So I feel like that game, that whole game, was, was probably the, the one thing I can I'll probably learn from you. Not to mention that delay, man. man. man yeah, it is. Hour, two hour delay y'all yeah. had before that game started. Yeah. Then they, couldn't, then they couldn't get the lights on. Yeah. That's absolutely so I took forever just to get started. Absolutely crazy. And then all the things we had, we had to go through that week. Where all oh, the, no the, training. The training yeah. is every day. We, no practice one day. Yeah. We walk through two, one day. two days of practice. Yeah. Having to come out there Friday and do and a little walk. through something as well, right? Uh, on the injury side of things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was a heck of a week, no doubt. So as we get ready to, to cut this, uh, who's going to do it first? Somebody's got to do it.
Where's your star? Uh, uh, the phone. Let's go. Huh? Pull out the phone or something like this. Oh, y'all gonna go a cappella? Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on now, you know the rules of engagement. You got it. Yeah, you know the rules of engagement. Come on. Somebody pull the phone out, let's go. Who got it? He got, he got a cappella, he got it. <laughs> well, let's go. Yeah, he started. He first, he just said, here we go. I can do it now. Come on, look. For all y'all that watch, don't judge my boy. Good Lord, do not bless me with a boy. <laughs> you might win the contest. Let's see. Go ahead, man. What's the, what's the prize? Oh, we can figure that out later. Uh, that's it. So I got to hit that note. That's it, man. You going to do it? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Underscore Matt V I CJ Bowler CJ B O L A R 